welcome to the Get Fit with Jodell podcast. I am as usual Jodell, and you know I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's not about the food. This is a nutritionist telling you this, but getting your light right, which means you're getting rid of the what I call the sins against our natural human living tendencies, is imperative if you're going to get your health on track. And you know this because a lot of you out there have dialed in your eating. You've taken all the fancy supplements. Your exercise is spot on, your movement throughout the day, you're doing all the biohacking things. And yet many of you are still contacting people like myself, health coaches with things like allergies and gut issues and sleep issues and blood sugar swings and autoimmune issues. And I think you'll appreciate if you're that person, what we're going to talk about on today's podcast, because this little thing of getting your circadian rhythm right can actually remedy all these little nuances that you're having. You're having. So did you know a study in 2021 showed that exposure to light with less blue light before sleep is better for energy metabolism? Specifically, they found that LED lights in the hours before bed cause changes in melatonin and are associated with the body's body fat oxidation process during sleep. So if weight loss is one of your goals, what if it's that your light's not right, not that your bread you know, choices aren't right or you're, you're eating too little vegetables? It could actually have more to do with what your light environment is. So the body runs on cycles. Some functions happen at night. Others happen during the day. When one is healthy, the clocks are in sync and the body's activities are properly coordinated. But a disruption in this circadian rhythm, getting you know too much light at night, not enough light in the day, only leads to the following. Okay, So higher rates of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, obesity, insulin resistance, And then something called leptin resistance. Leptin is that satisfied hormone after meals. But more than that, it's the mechanism. It's the best hormone for regulating body weight. And it's the most critical one as the master controller that exerts a wide range of essential processes in the body. So it's not just about controlling your appetite. It does so many other things. And it is regulated by getting your bright light in the day, dim light at night. So it's kind of the CEO of your weight management, if you will. And speaking of CEOs, I've got a CEO of a company that I love and trust and have used for years with me today to talk about building a healthy light environment in your life to elicit these these responses from our body that we're seeking. Like I said, set your food aside, eat what makes your body feel good. But more than that, let's focus on building a healthy environment. And Tristan Swanwick is going to help me do that. So this is the other brother. I've I've podcasted with James Swanwick and we say Swanwick, but it's actually pronounced Swanick, right, Tristan? Uh, It is pronounced Swanick, but uh, we'll accept Swanwick as well. (laughs) And he's an Australian entrepreneur and former journalist and CEO of Swanwick Sleep, the glasses that I'm wearing right now and that he's wearing and all of the things we're going to talk about today, my favorite anti-blue light company, because they're not just passionate about sleep. They're, or glasses, if you will, they're also passionate about health and they're always putting out free information on their newsletters and their blogs about what more you can do to dial in your circadian rhythm. So I wanted to have Tristan on to help me elicit this these more things that we can do to create this healthy environment to elicit more responses when it comes to results mm-hmm. that people are looking for. So Tristan, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So more than just helping people sleep deeper, getting your light right balances your body in so many ways, even lowering blood glucose and dampening cortisol. So it's not just about wearing the glasses. There's other things we can do. But let's dive in first to what are the benefits of that, what we talked about, the bright light during the day, and then getting that anti-blue light effect at night. What what are Mm. some of the benefits you've found from doing that? Well, look, uh, you've touched on a lot of those of those benefits and also the potential downsides if you're not actually aware of those things and optimizing. So uh, all of the ones that you mentioned are definitely true. But um, I suppose really when we, 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 we talk about light, it really is that it, it really is controls the circadian rhythm. And the circadian rhythm are those, those daily timetables that – 
are present in every cell of every organ of our body. Mm-hmm. It's essentially the, the master program that's instructing these cells you know, what to do at every part of the day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, th- I think that researchers and scientists are only really now just starting to appreciate just how deep th- this goes. Yeah. Um, I think suffice to say that really it's, you know, we could, you could spend the rest of your life researching this. We could spend the rest of our lives talking about all of the you know specifics about how it affects, yeah. how it affects you. But I think really the suffice to say that light controls the circadian rhythm, the circadian rhythm controls your biology and therefore light and the appropriate lighting is just absolutely crucial to a healthy life. Um, so, and that can be either the absence of light or the presence of light. So, um, as you, you know, you've mentioned, so for example, first thing in the morning, definitely want to get up. And the first thing, you know, I would recommend doing is that you expose yourself to natural light as best as you can. Um, if you can go for a walk outside, something like that, that is def- that is really kicking off that circadian rhythm in the morning and then therefore by the time you're actually ready to go to bed at, at night time, then you're actually that cycle has been running throughout the day and you're going to be in a much better position to get to sleep. So it's like I always like to say that, you know, a great night's sleep actually starts in the morning. Yeah. So um yeah, look, so of course I I've, I might have gone off in a tangent there, but Essentially, light controls the circadian rhythm, and the circadian rhythm really is is like now controlling the biology. Of course, there is the the, the uh, secretion of melatonin that comes in the evening with the absence of light. Most people know of uh, melatonin reasonably well as like it's the sleep promoting hormone. When the body starts secreting melatonin, then we you know the body gets ready to go to sleep. Uh, but again, like I think that researchers are really s- starting to appreciate that melatonin has so many other benefits and so much of so much more of a part to play than just helping us get to sleep. Mm-hmm. It's actually a very, very powerful antioxidant, and it can play a massive role in um, a massive role in sort of preventing all sorts of different Ill, ills, illnesses and, and ailments. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a complex topic, but um, as, as you say, light is light is very important for, for your overall health. Yeah, absolutely. When I work with clients, it's like I wish I could just jump to the meat of the consult, which is when I'm going to talk to them about EMF and blue light, because to me, what the results I've seen with people, that's what makes the biggest difference. I could change some mm. diet and they're going to get minimal results. But when these individuals start changing their circadian rhythm, they get to bed on at a decent hour instead of at one or two in the morning and they're getting a, a seven to eight hours of sleep and they're blocking that blue light at night. They're getting less illnesses. They're getting more body fat reduction. They're getting better glucose control they're getting better gut health overall and even thyroid because you would you agree that blue light is a form of electromagnetic frequency or radiation correct light is mm-hmm. a form of frequency right yeah so co- yep yeah, correct yeah so obviously you and I are on wired earbuds we know the benefit of not of not having a lot of like the bluetooth and the emf going on but also mm-hmm. If blue light is a frequency and if it's electromagnetic, there's studies that show that EMF affects the thyroid. That being said, when people hold their device, typically it's right in front of their thyroid. And Mm -hmm. it's no wonder that across the nation, it's probably so underdiagnosed. Hypothyroidism is so underdiagnosed because virtually every person I'm talking to has some sort of thyroid issue going on. So I think part of it is right under our noses. You know, we're we're looking at these devices. They're radiating blue light and radiation from connecting to cell phone towers right into our bodies. And we think it's all about the food. But what if it's getting rid of that device at night so you're winding down with a good anti-blue light form of light, whether it's candlelight or firelight or even bulbs that are anti-light maybe Mm. reading on an actual book instead of on a device. Like what if people did this versus just taking another supplement or taking this next diet trend that's going on? 
I think they're going to be pleasantly surprised because it's much easier to do these things than to have a drastic diet change. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I agree with you. And uh, that's right. It's like, if, I mean, obviously light has one, you know, one of the main, main effects that people understand is that light obviously controls or at least influences sleep. So if you're exposing yourself to all of, the wrong light in the evening, you're going to have a lot of trouble getting to sleep. You're going to have poor quality sleep that then will flow on to the next day. There's going to be all sorts of hormone issues. You're going to have low energy. You're likely going to have all sorts of imbalances with your adrenaline and cortisol as well, because you'll be taking coffee to try to keep yourself going or, you know, like then maybe you're taking sleeping tablets later that night to try to, you know, to get to bed and it can be this vicious cycle. And as you say, it's, you can have your diet dialed in, you can be, uh, you know, go out and get plenty of exercise. But the reality is that even if your diet is great, then your body is not able to actually process that food mm -hmm. properly. If you're, you know, if your sleep is, if your sleep is not, you know, optimal, uh, then you're going to, you're never going to be able to perform at your best when you're exercising and you will always, you know, be very low energy during the day. So it really is a bit of a holistic, uh, you know, conversation that, that we need to have. And uh, as you mentioned, I think light is, light is definitely a, a foundational part of that. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that getting that light during the day it is eliciting those enzymes and hormones and things that help us digest our food. So it could it could very well be that even folks with gut issues, if their light is off, then it's determining how they're going to assimilate and break down food. Perhaps maybe they're running on all eight cylinders during the day, you know, trying to cram as much into mm. the earlier part of the day and then they eat their big heavy meal at night while they're you know scanning on their feed on on some sort of social media and they're getting that blue light and a big heavy meal and then they wonder why they can't sleep at night so yeah. i think you're talking to a lot of people out there who have kind of gotten into this new rhythm if you will of we can be up all night because of all the led because of all the 70 inch screen tvs that we have in our homes and all the devices you know i think they say that most individuals have between 11 and 12 different devices that they're on throughout the day so i mean we have this availability but that's part of the problem is we've gotten away from nature naturally before the invention of the light bulb what did we do during the day we were out in the sun working with our hands and then when the sun went down, you went down, you laid down, you went to sleep or you sat around a fire with your family until everybody got sleepy. And I've been in those environments. I've been in third world countries where there is no electricity. When the sun goes down, everybody sits around the fire for about an hour and then nobody can keep their eyes open because that firelight is so conducive to the red light that's calming and nourishing to your circadian rhythm. But then at the same moment, as soon as that sun comes up in the morning, you're up. And I feel like if we would mimic that in our daily living, we would get a lot more response from our health that were the different goals that people are seeking. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with you. And in fact, that is, that is really the, I suppose, the holy grail. Um, <laughs> and what I like to say is that human innovation has far outpaced human evolution. You know, the, the reality is that the human as a biological entity is just not built for this modern environment that we put it in, you mm -hmm. know, that, the body is not actually designed to be eating processed food, to be uh, exposed to 24-hour artificial light, if that's what we you know, choose to put it through. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not designed to be sitting at desks and looking at very bright electric screens and having all sorts of beeps and zaps and things, you know, like diverting our attention all throughout the day in the evening. Um, so, and you mentioned going to, for example, third world countries or even just going out camping, for example, going to, you know, the woods or, or somewhere where you are actually, you know, you, you're actually getting away from all of that light pollution and you do realize very quickly that 
your body reacts in a much different way to that type of environment than when you're in a big city because that that absence of artificial electric light in the evening and then the sun, you know, obviously if you're in a tent or a cabin or something, generally the sun will come up. You generally tend to get up earlier as well. You'll go to sleep earlier. And very quickly you realize that that is the way that the human body is actually evolved to be living. So now it would be fantastic for us to, you know, say, all right, well, we'll all go back to the hunter gatherer lifestyle, but unfortunately that's not really realistic. Of course, there's amazing benefits to technology and, and, you know, modern innovations. We wouldn't be having this conversation in different parts of the world if, if it wasn't for that. So, of course, I'm not suggesting that we all go back to living in the caves as hunter-gatherers, um, but knowledge is power. If we If we understand the environment that we live in is not actually really is not optimal for our biology, then we can actually start to work to address those things. And, you know, uh, that is how I come to be talking to you. We, you know, we, myself and my brother James, he was spoken to before, uh, we were, we used to be journalists and then we started to really get interested in the health and biohacking uh, movements. And we began to realize, you know, some of the things that we've started to talk about and, that's when we, you know, we saw that there was this idea of blue light and how it affects people, particularly when it came to sleep. At that point in time, that was really the main, the main uh, factor that that, that we, people were, were really aware of when it came to the light was how it affected sleep. And uh, you know, we saw that there weren't really many serious, uh, you know offerings in the market for, you know, like there weren't really many good solutions in the market to help mitigate that sort of artificial blue light. So that's how we ended up uh, launching Swanix Sleep. I love that. Yeah, I know. It's, it's so cool that you saw a need and then created something, a product that I have used for years now and firmly believe in it, have seen it with clients take them off of prescription sleep medication, like just by mm. wearing the blue light blocking glasses, the orange colored ones like you have on at night. These are the day blockers, which we'll talk about how the difference, because I do have a lot of people that are like, no, I have 20% blue light blocking in my prescription lenses. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. great for during the day, but that's, you're going to need a whole nother set of glasses at night. Yeah. So the, I've seen people, I mean, instead of going on tons of different supplements and tons of different sleep, you know, tips, just switched to those amber colored glasses and they were off their prescription sleep med. And so I think that's so telling of what, how powerful light is when it can get you off a of prescription medication. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it's it, light is powerful, but I mean, what's even more powerful is sleep. Just yeah. having a healthy sleep. It's, there's no doubt that sleep is really a foundational pillar of health and wellness. Mm -hmm. you know, it is up there with, nutrition with movement slash exercise with mental health uh, as being absolutely fundamental to general health and wellness and, and you see so many people who eat really well and they go and they work out regularly and they do everything right in all of these other areas but then they neglect their sleep and the reality is that if you let any one of those pillars, if, if any one of those pillars is weak, then it's a weak foundation. You know, you it's a house of cards. Mm -hmm. So um, there's just, again, like it is another part of science that is becoming so much better understood, but it there's still, I think, a lot that we're not really – sure of that we're not we still have to learn about sleep and all of the amazing benefits that it brings um fortunately it is becoming a lot more research now people are really starting to realize that how important it is now and long may it continue yeah because uh, the laundry list that people come with sometimes of symptoms if we can get them to just get better sleep all of those clear up because that it's your repair it's your cellular turnover at night. Mm -hmm. 
it's your glymphatic system, the brain cleaning up so that you don't wake up. And everybody's had those days where you didn't sleep well for whatever reason. You wake up and you're like, why is it my brain functioning? Why do I feel like I'm foggy? Why am I so emotional? Why do I want to eat everything? You know, that has mm-hmm. to do with the with no repair happening at night. So just getting your sleep dialed in is huge enough to re- to fix a lot of the issues that are just systemic ongoing issues for a lot of people. Now, outside of de- like the, we were talking about the phones and like the devices that everybody has, but outside of that, there's more lighting issues that we need to discuss. And that's why, like we were talking about the daylight blockers. I recommend those for people that are on these screens during the day, especially a lot of people have several monitors and they're much stronger than even being out in the blue lit sun. So can you talk about that? Like why that we need to block too much light in the day too? Sure. Sure. I mean, what, the one thing that uh, I've got my my day swannies here actually. I, I think the thing the the simple way I like to, advice I like to give people is that is that when it comes to light, that I mean the biggest source of blue light is sunlight, and mm-hmm. sunlight is amazing. It's an amazing amazing thing, and so we shouldn't be scared of that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you don't want to you want to protect yourself against uh, you know sunburn radi- rate you ultraviolet radiation, yeah. especially coming from Australia. <laughs> 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 The skin cancer capital of the world. You can't have too much of a good thing, um, but uh, yeah, certainly, certainly, sunlight is great. But when we're actually it's during the day and we're sitting in front of a screen for long period of times, these you know these modern monitors now are actually so bright they they almost compete with the sun for brightness because we're looking right in them, and that can actually give us our body the wrong cues as well because it's not really a natural source of light so when we're sitting in front of these screens and we're blasting our eyes and our skin with this light all day every day you know we can have all sorts of issues such as adrenal fatigue you know cortisol imbalances um it just again it's like it is an unnatural form of light so it is much better to actually filter out some of that light during the day in order to be performing at our best. Yeah, because some people, if you think about the standard office environment that a lot of people are working in, they've got their screen, maybe they've got several monitors, like we said, and then they have overhead fluorescent lighting coming Mm -hmm. down on them. They might even have other sources of lighting coming in that are non-native, non-natural light. And so it's almost like you said, it can be twice the power of if they were out in the blue lit day sun, it's almost too much of a good thing. And, and, and essentially if it's not natural, like the sunlight, then it's not really even a good thing. So outside of devices, there's more that people should look at in their environment when we're talking a healthy environment that they need to be aware of. Like, for instance, maybe somebody is wearing, maybe you've listened to this podcast before that I've talked about blue light blocking glasses. So you have your little amber colored glasses that you're wearing at night, but you flick on like bright LED lights overhead in your home. And yeah, your eyes are covered, but what about their skin? Their skin's not yeah. covered. Is that LED still penetrating light receptors in their skin? I think so, yes. They're, they're now, we are beginning to realize that 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 the skin is also can be a photoreceptor. Um, and and it, you mentioned devices, and I'm glad you did sort of point this out because it is something that I like to tell people, and that is that it's not just your phone. It's not just your computer. Mm-hmm. It's not the, just the TV. People, are, I think, are pretty are starting to get very well aware that those things do have this bright blue light, but it's also just all of your modern home lighting and even not so modern home lighting, fluorescent lighting, mm-hmm. LED lighting. LED lights, while you know they're great for the environment, they're very energy efficient, but they're terrible for your health and biology. So now there are, so yes, you. The answer is you really do have to be aware of all of the light sources. So uh, even just um, I was I was thinking that even we spoke about TVs, there's things like air conditioners, fridges. They have all of the little green sort of like indicator lights or blue indicator lights. 
I have a washing machine here that when it gets turned on, it has like a little blue light that's, uh, that flashes across the other side of the room. All of those things actually add up and will have an effect. So um, again, it's, it's, whatever you can do to optimize your environment, the, the better you better off you're going to be. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned all those little electronic zap lights that I, I can't stand. Like when I have the little blackout stickers yeah. and a blackout sticker, all of my little things. And when I go to a hotel, I probably leave my stickers everywhere because I'm blacking <laughs> out everything. I want a blacked out yeah. environment. You know, that's what feels good to my body to be able to sleep. I'm, I'm one of those yeah. I have to have the right environment to sleep or I'm a very, I'm a dolphin. I sleep with one eye open. So I got to like, make sure that I can really dial it all in, but people don't think about it. They don't think about like late at night when you got the munchies and you open the refrigerator door, bright blue light all over your body. When you're in the car, mm. I've been home after, you know, you go to somebody's house and it's late at night and you've got your little screen. Now all these cars have screens. Mine doesn't because mm. I went back to a 2003 Baja. So I didn't have to have <laughs> have any screens in my car <laughs> uh, these bright blue screens shining in your face while you're driving and then headlights and street lights maybe you've got street lights coming in through your window that maybe black mm -hmm. curtains would be good for string lights a lot of people have these little like string lights around outside and inside their home to make it look nostalgia except for it can disrupt your circadian rhythm yeah then night well, lights, coming so up to um coming up to uh christmas as well yeah. so all of the christmas lights they're gonna gonna be playing a part as well absolutely and night lights so i had a night light growing up my parents always had night lights in the house bright blue lights and mm. just in the past probably five years i was doing research on blue light and myopia in children which is nearsightedness stems from early development with a lot of blue light exposure okay so and they st they even talked about in the in the article about uh, night lights how they can cause myopia or near yeah. i have near yeah. <laughs> like i've had it since i yeah. was years old so i'm like man if i could have just had like a different night light what would what would happen maybe i wouldn't have you know got myopia mm. or it wouldn't be mm. as strong you know but we didn't know back then because lights you know, being able to power everything was just coming about in the 80s where you could have like light on all the time. So yeah, I yeah that's right. become aware that these are things that we can actually control in our environment. Yep. And we'll talk about that because we can create a healthy home that actually creates a healthier us too. So I have, speaking of nightlights, I brought out the my favorite little gadget here, which is like, yep one like night light oh gee and, that looks good uh where, where do you get one of those <laughs> and they're very inexpensive and i love the dimmer that you put on it because if i you know have to get up and pee or my daughter does we can leave it on the low setting mm -hmm. but you want to get up and get ready but the, it's still dark outside and you don't want to disrupt your rhythm you can turn it up you know and and it's got the perfect amount like just enough to stay dim but then when you want light it will light up with no yeah. blue light this is this is an anti blue light night light so tell me about this has this been yeah. good for a lot of people have you gotten a lot of response because of this yeah yeah we have and i mean we, we started we we launched that and we started so we, obviously we started we started off and we're very well known for the glasses we've been doing that for a long time but then we began to understand everything that we've just discussed. And that is that, you know, protecting your eyes and the, you know, the photoreceptors in your eyes, that's just one part of the story. You really do, you really do need to be thinking about the entire environment because it's not just the look, you know, looking at screens, it's also all of the, the the lighting in your environment. So we quickly began to realize that, you know, while the glasses were certainly ideal, um, they, they weren't, you know, the full solution and that there was a lot of complementary ideas that we could start exploring. And so that's why we decided to, you know, to, to really go down that path of offering some blue free uh lighting and um i'm so thrilled that you you know you enjoy the night light uh because we're actually very soon now about to be launching some some a new range of night lights as well mm -hmm. some more light bulbs as well or free from blue light so yeah we're very proud to say that if you so wish you can come to us and we can help you equip your home your whole home 
uh, you know, to, to, to be a circadian friendly environment. Absolutely. Yeah. I, when my daughter was a toddler, she was given this gift of this like little night thing that you plug in and it like has stencils that goes around this light and it creates yeah. like, little stars and moons all over her room. Sounds really cute. Plays a little like sleepy time music. That thing was a nightmare because like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all it is is this bright blue lit ball. Yep. I, t- I plugged it in one time just to see what it would do. And I was like, there's no way I'm putting this in her room at night. Like it's like a disco mm. party for kids. Yeah. Rather than being it's, soothing. It's, it's, it's stimulating. You know, that's right. It's um, and look, I don't want to be judgmental on people, but you know, I'm actually, I became a father for the first time a couple of years ago. Now it's been almost, almost uh, exactly two years. And um, I still have my son sleeping with me and my partner in our bedroom and yeah. it's complete it's completely dark. It's you know, we've just never gone down that road of of night lights and I think it's you know, it wasn't it wasn't really a conscious conversation that I had with my partner. It's just that we always agreed and understood that and and know because you know, my partner is a doctor. So, you know, we understood that having these Sources of light just aren't healthy for anybody. The ideal conditions for sleep is a cool, dark room, as dark as possible, as, as you know, as close to pitch black as you can. And mm. now my son doesn't doesn't mind it because he doesn't know anything else. Right. So yeah. now, but like obviously, you know, I don't know. Maybe that will change. I'm only uh, I'm I'm only two years into the whole uh, fatherhood journey, so you know more than me. But it's the thing is that you know if we do want to start using a nightlight, then certainly having those blue free options is going to be important. Yeah, yeah, and educating my kid like that was important to me to teach her. Oh, we can't turn on that light at night. That's going to not make us sleepy, and our little sleepy signals and mm-hmm. feel shut down. And so, from a young age, I taught her that, and so she's really big on it now. Like she wears her little yeah. swan- swannies, and she t- turns on Excellent. the night light on dim when she goes in the bathroom. So, I mean, yeah, educating kids and making them aware is really part of the process too of letting them know, hey, this is this is not just something we have in our house. There's a reason for this and here's why. So you also have, because we were talking about um, the environment of like a lot of people just have LED lit homes or even fluorescent lights in their bathroom. And that is toxic. Like I've been in people's mm-hmm. condos where you go in the bathroom and the mirror like lights up fluorescent right on your face. Yeah. It's and, not, it's not, it's not very flattering, is it? <laughs> oh, and you came up with a solution that, that we can power our whole home and make it to where it's anti blue light at night, but still in the day getting, you know, the natural light, opening up all the windows, getting natural sunlight, but these bulbs that you created, are anti-blue light bulbs. I even have the red one here that I put in my lamp that I read with. And then yep. these are all over. I have them outside my house. Like I have them in the uh, the outdoor sconces and they keep bugs mm-hmm. away. So not only yeah, yeah. like you're coming home after being out and it's late and you don't want that blue light coming into your door. But also the bugs are like, they don't like it. It was, cause there's it was, it was a happy, co- it was a little happy coincidence <laughs> there actually. <laughs> But uh, I mean, hey, it's useful. Absolutely. And throughout my house, like my bathroom sconces have the orange, amber, blue lit bulbs because that way I can get ready for bed at night or my family can get ready for bed and we're not flicking on bright bright LED lights. Mm. So when you were talking about those photoreceptors in the skin, this is a way to mitigate that. Either that or you want to, you know, find some sort of shell that covers your entire body at night, but that's not feasible. So changing the lighting in your house is one small thing you can do that keeps your circadian rhythm kind of matching the natural light of the earth. At night, we would naturally only have like candlelight or firelight. So if you don't Mm. want to light a bunch of candles, there's another alternative that people can look into. So tell me about the red light too, because you guys just came out with the red light. Yeah. 
Look, so I mean, the, the, the amber light, they that is completely blue free. The red light is completely blue and green free. Yeah. Uh, both lights are, are great. Um, it really, a lot of it comes down to personal preference. The red uh, light bulb is also doesn't isn't quite as bright as the, the amber. So, what we find is that people like to use the amber, and they're they're more so living areas like the living room, perhaps, uh, or kitchens. And then the red ones are great for the bedroom for reading lamps, as as you mentioned, because they're they are significantly dimmer. And if you think about the sun setting, where the color starts to change from like that blue down to more of an amber, and then just as the sun starts to go down, you get that that reddish type of hue. So it's that's a way of, of mimicking that natural sunset where the amber for the living areas so you can start to get that cell melatonin secretion and then when you are re getting ready for sleep and you know in the bedroom then that that red light just helps to really ease you ease yourself off into sleep um so yeah we that's right that's why we've got those two offerings and um we've also now going to be introducing some of those uh, that night light that you have in red as well Ooh. um and as i mentioned we're also going to be rolling out a couple of new um night lights that have a little bit of additional functionality motion sensing so as you mentioned the late night trips to the bathroom you know it sometimes you know they can be a little bit tricky when you're half asleep and you're stumbling around a dark, a dark room as we've just established that like a pitch black room is actually the ideal conditions for sleep so mm -hmm. you know having that little motion sensor light there and you can just set it to however bright you want you can have either amber or, or red and it's just going to give you enough light to make sure that you're not tripping over on your way to the bathroom you can have have one in the the bathroom as well so mm -hmm. you can go do your thing and then get back and that having that light is not actually going to interfere with your sleep because actually just even just short bursts of uh of light in the evening can actually you know disrupt that circadian rhythm i'm so glad you mentioned that because i read somewhere that it was about 15 seconds only a blue light can totally stop melatonin production. So let's say you're getting ready for bed, you're reading under red light, but then you go and flick on your LED bathroom light to go yep. get ready for bed. You've just now told your body, don't don't finish releasing melatonin. That's when people lay down in bed and they go, oh, man, I was just tired. Why am I not tired now? Yeah, <laughs> that answers that's right. Questions of like you're falling asleep on the couch, but then all of a sudden you get up and go to the bathroom and now you can't go back to sleep. So that's where you want to make sure all of your environment in your home matches that light of the sun. And I love that you said that that whole transition that happens from blue to orange to red. I mean, you can see that at a sunset. And that's what's so important to mimic in our environment. Because think about it. We've all been to like hospitals where it's like blue lit everything everywhere. And how well do you sleep in a hospital? Not mm -hmm. well. And that's where people need their best sleep. They're trying to heal, you know? So yeah. I feel like it should be a standard process for that's, every that's person before, that checks in to yeah. get blue, lit, or blue blocking glasses. That's, 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 that's before we even get started on some of the food that they serve in hospitals oh, these yeah. days. I mean, amongst the cell phone towers they're putting on top of hospitals. Yeah. I mean, that's a yeah. whole other podcast. But yeah, and then red light is so powerful. I mean, there's so many studies on red light and the thyroid, red light and skin health, red light and hair growth, red light and regrowing tooth dentine. Like you can actually regrow your teeth in a better way from red light exposure and mm -hmm. other detoxifying ben benefits from like infrared saunas. So even using red light at night could actually have more medicinal benefits just sitting and reading under red light than than not than just using your glasses, you know? So I think I love that aspect of it because there's more, anything that elicits more benefits than just the the dim light at night, I think is great. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's right. It's 
there is no one and done sort of magic bullet when it comes to, to some of these things. There really is. It's like you do have to take a holistic approach. So um, whatever you can do, you know, whatever you can do helps. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're very, very proud to, you know, be launching some of those new things soon. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just the beginning too. We really want to actually keep researching this, keep, bringing out new solutions um, and uh, yeah, so very excited about that. Yeah. So we've talked about like the glasses, getting your light right. I know you guys have some, even some sleep mask that maybe somebody's in a, in an area where they can't even block out little green lights or street lights. Mm. Maybe they just wear a sleep mask when they sleep. Um, are there other things that when somebody asks you, like, what can I do to really dial in my sleep outside of wearing the glasses before bed and, and making sure that the blue lit in your, the blue lit home is dampened? What else would you say that you recommend? Um, well, you know, there's things like hypnotherapy and apps and, you know, I don't, I'm a little bit I'm hesitant to, to rec, uh, recommend too many types of apps or yeah, because maybe. inevitably you have to actually have a device with you for it to work. So, and, you know, there are plenty of headphones out there that, as you mentioned, you know, having these like modern headphones so close to our brain, I just right. don't, doesn't maybe. necessarily maybe. make <laughs> sense to me. So, um, but uh, you mentioned the environment. The environment certainly is as dark as you can get it. If you can't get it completely dark, maybe you have a partner who prefers it a different way or they need a, some sort of light on, then certainly the mask is another way to actually, you know, help with that full blackness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's the, obviously, whatever you can do to get a quiet sort of environment, um, that helps. Um, and... But, you know, we were talking about circadian rhythms. We've been talking about nutrition and really the timing of when you eat, the timing of when you exercise is now really, really important. So that's one thing to, to keep in mind is that, when, especially when it comes to sleeping, it's not just when you actually go to bed and turn the lights out. It's also all throughout the day and the timing of everything that actually is playing a massive role there. So certainly try to avoid eating uh, too soon before you go to bed. A couple of hours before going to sleep, I would recommend just stop eating as much as possible. Um don't exercise too uh, too too late at night because obviously exercise is going to get all of the you know the good hormones flowing, the endorphins and the and the cortisol and things like that, and that can make it harder to get to sleep as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the one, uh, even though I said that there's not it's not necessarily not necessarily big on recommending apps, one sort of source of information which I do recommend is uh, Doctor. Sachin Panda, who's really the you know the godfather of circadian rhythms and circadian biology, uh, he is at uh, Stanford University, and they have a great app now called um, My Circadian Clock, and that is an app where you can go and you can actually log your your food, your water, your exercise, your sleep, all of those types of things, and they actually give you really comprehensive. Uh, recommendations as to the, the optimal time to actually do all of those things in order to optimize your circadian rhythm. The other great thing about that is that it actually is contributing to research around this topic because by signing up, you give them permission to log anonymous data from, from the app and that is then going towards this ongoing research into circadian rhythms. So that's definitely a resource that uh, that I, I I like to I'm happy to recommend to people because I think that it's you know it's it's really not only are you helping to optimize your own biology, but you're also contributing to the you know science of it as well. Yeah, that's super cool, especially because they're using real life data. I always have trouble with the studies where they're using mice because mice are nocturnal. So if they have any studies about, oh, yeah, mice aren't affected by blue light during the day. Well, the, 
that's yeah we're there because we're two different species so like yeah so some of the information you have there is not adequate but getting real research from real people and then really thinking about it in human logic terms i always say those sins against the human biology like how we're supposed to live if we going back to the nutrition piece if we thought about it before the light bulb people are going to eat when the sun is up they're not going to go hunt for a deer or go pick from their garden when the sun is down so it makes logic common sense that we would eat only when the sun is up so that's kind of staying with the circadian rhythm they're going to mm-hmm. move more when the sun is up just like an animal that moves does most of its movement during the day to gather food and things like that versus they're going to bed down or wind down in the evening when there's no light. So if we think in terms of that, we can really, our day determines our night, as you said, when it comes to sleep, what we do all day determines our night. So I think that's a really good piece that you mentioned about the nutrition, making sure you're not having like this huge heavy meal before you lay down for bed, because that's a recipe for acid reflux and for (laughs) Just a really mm-hmm. poor night's sleep when your body's going, wow, I've got all this work to do on this big, heavy meal. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So this has been great. Um, Other things that you recommend, do you have any like favorite oils that you like or maybe any other supplements you recommend people try for sleep? I always like to give a lot of tools in everybody's tool bag to help them move forward with um, their goals. Yeah, uh, certainly, you know, aromatherapy is has been shown to be very useful. Uh, we do a, a lavender spray. You okay. can spray it onto your sheets. That aromatherapy helps, helps you get relaxed. We have a roll on lavender as well. Uh, there's, there's also plenty of options out there. So that's, uh, that's also good. Um, I think uh, at the moment it's uh, you know when it, with, the, with the weather getting cold um, and people have heaters on, it can get quite um, the the air can get very dry. So a uh, humidifier can be actually a, a useful tool as well when you're sleeping, as well as just in general. Um, I I don't. I personally don't really recommend, you know, melatonin supplements because I just feel that that seems that just doesn't seem to me to be the right choice to to actually supplement a natural hormone. Um, it feels like to me, it's like if you're doing all of the other things right, that there shouldn't really be that need to actually supplement the melatonin. Um, yeah, because we can do that. Why, If there's a way to make our own melatonin, then there's no need to take it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And and certainly I think that, um, you know, I'm not a nutritionist, but you can speak to the fact that there, you know, there's certain there's certain foods and just having a healthy balanced diet is going to help you with your sleep as well and your biology. Yeah. I love balancing out the minerals throughout the day, like with electrolytes and minerals, because minerals are the spark plugs during the day that are going to get us going up to wind down at night and especially magnesium being your calming mineral too. And and yeah, hydration is one thing that I, uh, I, I, I've been meaning to mention too. (laughs) hydration. It's people just don't drink enough water and it's just it's it's critical yeah absolutely and i love a good castor oil pack too if somebody wants to lay down at night turn on that red light read your book put a good castor oil liver pack right on your liver that's so soothing i can't tell you how many clients fall asleep with that on because it's so soothing a lot of our liver gets agitated during the day when we're doing all these things and especially if anybody over exercises or sometimes eating the wrong foods or drinking alcohol mm. you really soothe that liver because the liver will wake you up if it's unhappy at night you'll get that wake up between 1 to 3 a.m and your liver's kind of knocking on the door going i am not okay i've run out of glucose or i'm doing all these processes and i don't have the enzymes that i need or whatever it is so doing those casserole packs can really soothe the liver yeah so. yeah and there's i mean hot and cold therapy in yeah. you know in in general is great as well uh i I live uh, in Copenhagen, uh, the capital of Denmark, and um, I'm fortunate enough that uh, just a couple of blocks down the road from me is the harbour, and it's actually clean enough to go and swim in there. And at the moment, it's probably, it's starting to get about uh, 10 degrees Celsius, which is, uh, I'm not too sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's plenty cold enough uh, to to start getting uh, you know those endorphins going. Yeah. So you know you 
people would see that uh, cold plunges and uh, you know ice baths are starting to become really popular. Mm-hmm. Um, here in Denmark, there's actually a researcher who's the foremost leading scientist and researcher into cold therapy, and the science around that is really solid now and really exciting, and it's showing that having those, you know, that cold exposure is actually, um, it's actually producing dopamine hits on a par with taking cocaine. The wow. difference being, the difference being that when you do it as a co- cold exposure, the dopamine stays elevated for several hours afterwards. Whereas obviously cocaine is like lasts like 15 minutes and clearly is not, not very healthy for you in, in other regards as well. So yeah, cold therapy is actually is amazing. That's one thing. If you haven't tried that, I, I recommend checking that out. Um, if you don't, uh, if you don't have, if you're not in a cold environment, then, you know, you can look at a cold plunge, um, just have cold showers in the morning um, is, is is definitely something that's worth looking into. Yeah. Sometimes I start people with just splashing in the morning, splash your face with ice cold water and just start. Mm. But I actually, I love what you said about the dopamine because I feel that. So I live on a lake and I walk down to the lake every morning. Right now it's getting really low temperature. We're getting down probably like somewhere similar to what 10 degrees Celsius, it's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit right now in the water. And that is a nice blast to my body when I go for a swim. But when I come back, it's like for hours, I just feel like, ah, like, so if people have a way to do that, or just start by splashing your face, or I even have like a horse trough that I turned into a cold tub, just this metal horse trough that sits out on my deck. And it's on a concrete deck, so I'm grounding when I'm in it. And I just let the natural temperature of the air dictate what it is. So right now it's pretty cold because we've had some pretty cold temperatures. But that is a, you know, $120 way to like get a little cold tub on your deck and go in daily because water actually dissipates EMF frequency. So when we've been around all these devices and blue light, you can actually get in water to dissipate and mitigate some of the effects on the mitochondria from all that EMF. So it's really cool. I love where you are in Copenhagen. I've been there. I've been to that harbor and it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, um, it is amazing in the middle of a middle of a capital city Mm -hmm. of a modern, modern world, first world country. And the water is clean enough to be able to go swim in it. And, um, it's great. And of course, this part of the world, they've been enjoying that, you know, the cold plunges and the saunas for hundreds of years. Yeah. And um, it's something that I only was introduced to a couple of years ago. Uh, I moved here from uh, from Australia and uh, it certainly doesn't get that cold uh, in Australia. And I was used to coming from a place that's, uh, you know, in Queensland, which is you know, 20, 24, well, not 24 seven, but like every day is sunny and warm and coming to the Northern hemisphere where it's now winter and, you know, like the the sun in the height or the depths of winter, the sun comes up at around about 9am and goes down at about 3am. And that really is, you know, that's tough for someone like me who's grown up in, in such a sunny environment. And what I've found is that, this, these, uh, you know, winter bathing, as they call it here, is actually gotten me through the winter because it's just so good for your mental health to get that really that big hit of dopamine. And the other thing about it is it's uh, it's something that you look forward to as well. So rather than sort of you know dread the winter that's coming, you actually start to look forward to it and and embrace it. So. Um, and then, of course, there's the you know there's the, the heat therapy as well. Uh, you can get yourself infrared saunas it, it, in your own home these days for you know it's coming very very affordable actually to have a little you know two person infrared sauna in your home and there's plenty of benefits to you know to saunas as well. So and if you're fortunate enough that you've got a sauna plus you've got a cold plunge then you can obviously do what the you know the fins have been doing for hundreds of years and you can do the sauna to the the cold back to the sauna and um it's, it's amazing stuff 
Oh, that's great. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it just sounds like you, you've made the best of a, an environment that you weren't quite used to. So that's what we can all do. We can all learn to like make the most of where we are, control what you can control, let go of the rest, create this healthy environment wherever you are, make your home like this sanctuary of health to where, yeah, you go to the office or you go to work and it's stressful. You can at least come home and have this really healthy environment that mitigates a lot of the damage from the day. And I think you guys mm. will see better results in your health when you dial that area of your life in. So Tristan, thank you for all these tips and information. This has been fun talking to you. Where can, obviously I can put the, in the show notes, show notes, the uh, Swan Oak Sleep website, but where can they maybe connect with you and then see what's, what's coming down the line and things like that? Yeah. Uh, I don't actually, uh, I don't really keep that much of a social media presence. I have to say, because um, one thing, I think that's one of these uh, modern world uh, innovations that I think aren't, isn't particularly great for us social media. So you can just email me at uh, at, at, at uh, Tristan Tristan at Swanix Sleep, mm-hmm. uh, or you just reach out through our customer service. We've got a you know a live chat on the website. Feel free to drop me a line there. Uh, happy to answer any questions or you know give any sort of support I can. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me, and thank you so much for all your support over the years, Jodo. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, we might have to have a whole nother podcast on the dangers of social media, because this is the only form of social media I do. So I understand that the need to like, detox a little bit away from all of the social stuff. Like, so. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm, I'm considering going back to just writing letters. And so right. if you want to, if you want to get in touch with me, you can write me a there you go. Yeah, my daughter and I love writing actual handwritten letters. It's kind of a lost art. She even wants to get into photography. So I thought that was cool. So anyway, thank you so nice. much for your time. And I'll let you go for your evening. And uh, we'll do this again. I appreciate you. Anytime, Jodell. Great, mm-hmm. great to speak to you. Yeah, you too. Bye for now. Trouble sleeping? Gut issues? Do you know your thyroid is off, but your doctor won't do anything about it? Symptoms don't lie. If you feel like you don't feel good, then something is off. Listen to that inner knowing and reach out. That's what I'm here for, to help guide you towards what's going on at the root of your issues and get them resolved. Bring back your vitality, your energy, your happiness, and get that body you've always wanted with nutrition and lifestyle therapy. I approach it from a very very bio individual way and each consult is unique to you where I get to know you and what your body needs rates are affordable with different options depending on what you need and what you can afford no two people are alike and none of their lifestyles are alike so I don't approach any consultation the same as another you are as unique as your fingerprint so let's get to the bottom of what your body needs and get you looking and feeling as awesome as I know you are to get started with a free 15 minute discovery Call email me at getfitwithjodel at gmail.com. That's G E T F I T with Jodel, J O D E L L E at gmail.com. Well, it's not raindrops on roses, but these are a few of my favorite things that I always notice a difference in my health when I stick to these healthy habits. So number one is watching the sunrise or some sort of red light exposure every single day. Number two is grounding and earthing daily. And sometimes I combine watching the sunrise while swimming in my local lake. First thing in the morning as the sun comes up, I'm grounded. I'm earthed right into this natural body of water. Number three is C60. I've been using a supplement called C60 Purple Power for over three years now with great results. I don't intend to stop. I use it for a variety of reasons. And number four, as most of you know, I am a professional paddleboard athlete. So paddleboarding is always part of my weekly regimen of keeping my mind fresh, getting my vitamin P, and keeping my body in a really great healthy state with lots of active relaxation in that form of movement that uses up your entire body. Now I'm gonna have a link to a few of the things that make these habits more efficient, more affordable and effective for me in the show notes of this podcast that I personally use and recommend daily to my clients. The first one is gonna be, if you can't get some sort of sunlight exposure, then consider a red light device 
which I love sauna space and I'm going to have a link where you get a 5% discount in saunaspace.com in the show notes here. So check that out. Also, if you need to get grounded, but you're working at a computer all day in an office on the fourth floor, I get it. Let's get a grounding mat underneath your feet. So while you're getting all that EMF exposure, it's actually just getting right out of your body and you're getting grounded throughout the day. So I'm going to have a link to ultimate longevity where you can get a simple universal mat to put right underneath your feet. And I'm going to have a link to C60 Purple Power where you can save 10% on this supplement that can be used from anything to more energy, to better hair and skin, to also helping with blisters and bruises and scrapes and even zits. Yes, you can use it even as mouthwash. So there's so much you can do with this. And for paddleboarding, I'm going to recommend Glide SUP, Glide SUP, Stand Up Paddle Boards, because they come in inflatable as well as rigid hardboards, and they are by far the best boards I've used as of recent years to make sure that I'm getting a quality board that gets me out on the water and I don't have to worry about it having any issues. So that's GlideSUP.com, and you can get 10% off using my code that will be in the show notes. So I hope you get to use some of my favorite things, but also reach out and tell me about them. Tell me about what you like about these products too. Get fit with Jodell at gmail.com. What would it feel like to have virtually every supplement known to man at your fingertips? And what if you only had to drink water to get it in? I firmly believe in something called frequency. It's what you feel when you touch a rock that's warmed by the sun. That warmth is frequency. It's how your text message gets to your friend's phone thousands of miles away. It travels on frequency. It's lightning. When the lightning hits the earth, it adds electrons to the earth, and that's how we ground. It's wind. It's brain waves. It's microwaves. Everything has frequency. And now you can write frequencies into your water since water holds frequencies. So imagine if each supplement has its own frequency and you write that into water, you can literally have any supplement, any peptide, any bioidentical hormone in your water. Listen to a podcast I did with a guy named Anton Federenko, a leading expert on frequency, and then visit my link in the show notes to Infopathy or Infoceuticals, which is a way to infuse your water with the frequency of any substance or supplement that you want. Like I said, even peptides without ever spending a penny on them. Check out the show notes for a link to Infopathy and a special discount code just for my listeners.